Hello future psychologists and welcome to today's taster lesson for A-level psychology. My name is Miss Kay and it is my pleasure to take you through today's lesson and I just want to let you know what this hour will involve. So the first thing is that you are going to meet your teachers and myself and Miss Smith have recorded videos where we introduce ourselves, our backgrounds and our roles in the school. We're going to uncover what psychology actually is and what you'll be studying throughout the duration of your course here at Hayes. We'll be looking at the AQA A-level specification, which is the exam board that we follow. We'll also look at the typical lesson structure in a psychology lesson here at Hayes, the textbooks that you need, students work as well. And finally, we'll introduce the task that you need to complete by the end of this taste today. Hopefully you enjoy the session. So the next slide that will come up will be videos of myself and Miss Smith introducing ourselves and getting familiar with you all. Hello to our new year 12s. I've got to say, first of all, this is probably the strangest induction lesson I've done. Um, I've been at Hayes for 14 years now and this is very different. I'll, I'll say that for something. I just wanted to say hello and to give you a face to put to the name or indeed to one of the voices in this lesson as well. So I'm Miss Smith. I've been at Hayes for 14 years, as I said, and I absolutely love it here. I really enjoy teaching psychology. It's my main passion and, and the main thing I teach to sixth form at Hayes as well. As you can see today, I'm coming from my kitchen slash home gym. You might hear my dog bark at some point, so it's not going to be like a normal lesson, but at least I'll get to kind of engage with you in some way. So psychology is something that I absolutely love, that I studied at university, that I really hope that you're going to enjoy as much as I did when I was at school. It's really inspired me to want to become a teacher to teach it as well. And I hope that throughout the two years, you're going to really become true psychologists where you don't just study in the classroom, but you walk out of the classroom and you want to analyse and interpret and explain and question and use all those qualities and skills that real psychologists really use. So I hope that you enjoy our lesson and that I get to meet you properly, not from my kitchen, very soon. Take care. Hello future psychologists of Hayes School. My name is Miss K. My full name is Miss DK or Dua. You can say it with your chest, <laughs> but most students call me Miss K. And, and I want to welcome you to the psychology department. I work as head of psychology alongside Miss Smith, who's a lead teacher, and we lead the psychology department. Now, as you are interested in studying psychology, I need to put aside one myth, which is that you can read someone's mind after studying psychology. If you've done it for GCSE, you will know that that is absolutely not the truth. What we do is we read people's behaviours, we read the way that they behave in certain situations, in certain environments, and we use that to inform our understanding of the human mind and behaviour. Psychology is a wonderful subject. It's a subject that links to so many disciplines that you will come across. It links to maths because there's a lot of statistics in psychology. About 10% of the course comprises of maths. There's English, of course, in terms of essay writing. There's history and understanding the research that has taken place in the past. There's science because we look at biopsychology and we look at the specific function of the brain and also the human body. So you can see that indeed psychology has many connections to disciplines that you've already studied at GCSE. Now, one thing that I also want to make very, very clear is that psychology is not an easy subject. It's not a subject that you pick if you want to have a chilled time. You will not be chilled in our lessons. You will work. You will work in lessons and outside of lessons. And I need you to have the mindset of excellence as, as you've decided to study psychology. It's a subject that will demand your time. It will demand your energy. And you have to be invested in the subject to the point that you regard yourself and you see yourself and you behave like a psychologist. And that means that you're able to make connections between what you study in class and the everyday world. Recently, my current year 12s have been writing articles about the links between psychology psychology and the current coronavirus pandemic and that shows you how indeed psychology is applicable to the real world. The last thing that I want to share is give you a few details about who I am, what I studied, how I'm qualified because I know I look young, I probably look like a sixth former, please don't judge me, <laughs> but um, I studied 
for A level, I did four A levels. I did biology, chemistry, maths, and psychology. Um, I also did the EPQ. I got an A star in psychology, A star in my EPQ, B in biology, um, B in maths, and a C in chemistry. I went on to study psychology at the University of Surrey, one of the most incredible universities in the United Kingdom, if not the world. Um, and I had a really good time there. I did a four year sandwich degree, which meant that my third year was actually a placement year where I spent one month in Beijing, China, and I was working for a company called Astronaut China. Um, and then I went on to do my teacher training and I did that at UCL and um, the Institute of Education and I did that whilst working as teacher of psychology at a sixth form college in Clapham. I then went on to do my master's at UCL and I did my master's in educational assessment. I came out with a fantastic distinction that I'm very very proud of. And then at the moment I'm not tired of studying so I'm currently doing my doctorate so very soon perhaps not within your time but future students to come will certainly be calling me Dr K as opposed to Ms K. So that's the background on me. I love music, I love God, I love Jesus, um, I'm a Christian and you will see me carry my faith in the way that I relate with you, in the way that I push you to, to be the best that you can, to strive for excellence but also in the way that I love my students to the point that I want to see them succeed um, and fulfill their full potential. So that's me in a nutshell. I welcome you to Hay School, I welcome you to the psychology department, but remember that in this department, excellence is the norm. You have to choose excellence or excellence. We don't do mediocre around here. All my students know this, and I'm looking forward to sharing an excellent journey with you all at Hayes. So now that we've gotten acquainted, this slide is just a summary of the details about myself and Miss Smith. Some of the most important details here are our favourite confectionery, which of course our students love to spoil us with during Christmas time. So please do not hesitate to do that. <laughs> so what is psychology? What is this subject that you are about to study? Well, let's start off with what psychology is absolutely not. Psychology is not about reading people's minds and that's probably the most annoying question that every psychology student or every psychologist gets. We can't read your minds but what we can do is using our skills, knowledge and expertise we can read your behaviour. Psychology is not about speaking to dead people, it's not about becoming a psychic or even developing horoscopes, we do not do that here. Psychology is not an easy subject. If you're thinking that you need an artsy subject to kind of ease off and, you know, relax during your A-levels, psychology is not the subject to choose. It is a subject that will demand your time, your efforts and even your mind. And it's that introspective nature of psychology that makes it a fantastic subject to study because of how it applies to every single aspect of life. And finally, psychology is not just about psychiatry. So when we use the term psychiatry, we're talking about um, mental illness. It's not just about studying mental illness. In fact, during the course, we are only going to study depression, schizophrenia, OCD and phobias. And beyond that, there is a wealth of knowledge that comes along with psychology, such as our social interactions, such as our, how we form attachments with our primary caregiver, such as how we behave in groups and so on. So we've dispelled the myth about what psychology isn't. But what is psychology then? Psychology is the scientific study of people, the mind and behaviour. And this is a definition which is provided by the British Psychological Society. And psychology tackles some of the big questions that we have. Questions such as how can humans commit genocide or torture other humans? Surely there might be a psychological explanation for this. Do we have free will or are we driven by our environment, our biology or non-conscious influences? What is mental illness and what can we do about it? How does memory work? Do we all have giant USBs in our heads? Why do babies attach to their primary caregiver and not a stranger? And lastly, what factors make us obey? Psychology is able to address these questions and use research to answer these questions. 
So in order to answer these questions, we have to learn about the work of key psychologists. Psychologists such as Zimbardo, Milgram, Ainsworth, Ash and Freud, just to name a few. And we look at the research methods that they use to try and answer some of these questions about the human mind and behaviour. And I'm sure that as we answer these questions in our study of A-level psychology, you'll become more excited and more enthralled about getting involved in research yourself. Now, at this point, I want you to pause. And if you have this PowerPoint opened up in the PDF format, you'll be able to click directly on that link and it will take you to a 10 minute video which summarizes what psychology is. If you don't have the PDF, and you don't have access to a direct link, what you can do is type in what it says at the bottom, so the title of the video, Intro to Psychology Crash Course Psychology Hashtag One. If you type that in into the YouTube search bar, the video should come up and it will give you a lovely insight into psychology. The guy who does the video, he's absolutely brilliant. He speaks really fast, hence I have to watch him with subtitles. So you may want to keep the subtitles on. So I'm just going to talk to you very briefly about the specifications, so about the content of what you're going to actually study on our course. And if you want to look up more details for it, we follow AQA exam boards. So lots of different boards offer psychology. It's very popular, but we're with AQA, which is the most popular one. Now, our course is broken into three different papers, and I'm just going to run through them briefly with you now. So paper one has four topic areas, and I'll look at them in a bit more depth on the next slide, but they are really standalone topics which are very different. So you may absolutely love one of them. For example, on this list, oh, um, it's hard to choose, but psychopathology is probably my favourite one. So what makes someone normal or abnormal? What are some different mental health issues? How do we treat people? And then some other people might have a different favourite, like they might absolutely love attachment, so childhood development and how that affects us. Paper two, we've got these sections here. Now we actually start the course with approaches. It's fundamental to our course. So different psychologists may see things differently. They might have different ideas that drive how they understand people. And the approaches topic is really interesting because it gives you the whole variety of ways that people understand and explain behaviour and compares and contrasts them as well. We've then got our biopsychology in this topic area. So very technical biology, very in-depth biology about the brain, about physical and chemical processes that are going on that drive our behaviour. So it's fun biology because it's about people, how it affects us, so how it, how your, it affects your sleep-wake cycle, for example, but it is quite technical biology there. And research methods is the most important topic in the whole course. It sits in every single topic area. It's how we investigate people. How do we do our studies? How do we find out our data? How do we do our experiments, our case studies, our interviews? So research methods is really important to our course. Paper three, this is in year two. So in year 13, you'll study paper three and it goes much more into depth with specific topic areas. So some people who come to psychology already know they want to go into a particular field like criminology or forensic psychology. And this gives them a really in-depth version of learning about those topic areas. And even if you don't, there's something in there that will interest everyone. So for example, relationships, um, you can apply this to your own lives. You can think about why people have certain attraction to other people, what maintains relationships, why they break down. So it's relevant to everyone, these topic areas. Now, at the end of year 13, you have three exams and each one lasts two hours. So they're broken into these three papers. I'll show you that now. And each paper, you have a section that's half an hour within that exam. So you've got four in paper one and three. And in paper two, remember I said research methods is actually a double section because it's so important. So throughout your whole A-level course, research methods will get you 25 to 30 percent of your overall mark comes from research methods. So you have this double section in paper two, but it also comes up in paper one and three. You get some shorter questions on it there. And just to flag up as well, 10% of your psychology A-level is actually maths. So we look at things like inferential statistics. We revisit some concepts that you've already done in GCSE maths, 
like graphs, data analysis, data collection. So that element of research methods, the maths element, looks at how we analyse the data that we collect from people. The next few slides just have some more detailed information about the course content. So take your time, read through it, think about what excites you about the course content, what you're really looking forward to, and anything that you've also got questions about in terms of that content. So as I explained before, you'll have three exams at the end of year 13 and each exam will be for two hours each. And within the exam, there'll be four sections and each section will be 30 minutes each. Now we tend to have the rule, it's about a minute a mark. So there's a 30 minute section and a 24 mark allocation for that. So you get some thinking time and then about a minute a mark writing time. Now these questions range in style and the biggest question, the essay question that you would get is a 16 mark essay that you'd spend 20 minutes on. So within your questions, you're being asked to do things like outline and evaluate research. So you need to learn some studies, what psychologists did, what they found, what's good about it, what's bad about it. And this would vary between the shorter questions might ask you for definitions or differences between things or similarities between things. They might ask you for examples or brief outlines of research as well. A lot of the questions in psychology also ask you to apply your knowledge to an example or a scenario that you're given. So there really is a whole range of questions from short answer, you know, one mark multiple choice things, all the way up to 16 mark essay questions. In terms of textbooks for the course, you will find an absolutely huge range of textbooks because they love providing resources for the AQA and syllabus in particular. So if you go onto Amazon, you will find lots of resources on there. Now, just to point you in the right direction, if you did want to invest in a book already, we are really keen on these particular textbooks, which are the cat and the dog on the front. So these ones that are the ones that most students will buy if they want their own copy of a textbook. Now they are usually between 25 and 30 pounds on Amazon and other that, you know, there's other providers on there as well. If you're a bursary student, you can ask the sixth form team about how to use these support funds for your textbooks. Now, we don't say that you have to have a textbook, so you don't have to go and buy a textbook. We just say that if you are going to buy one, if you want to buy one, this is the book that we'd recommend. So the year one textbook here, just to make you aware that in the corner, in the top right corner, it must say for AQA. So you'll see many books that look exactly like this and the only tiny difference will be that in that top corner it might say a different exam board and it, the content will be very different in that book even if the cover looks the same. So just to make it really clear you don't have to buy a book, if you want to buy a book this is the book that we recommend that you do buy. Most students own their own textbook because a lot of our pre-reading and notes and independent study it's really helpful to have a copy of your own book at home so if you want to buy one this is the book that we'd recommend for you to buy. You might be thinking, well, what else do I need to get prepared to get ready for psychology? You'll need your own folder. So we don't provide exercise books in terms of you collecting your notes because we actually teach different units and it gets very muddled otherwise. So what we say is come along with your own folder, some lined paper. Um, if you want to use your own exercise books, you can do. It'd be good to have a separate one for each teacher because the topics don't cross over. Plastic wallets, of course, to make it all beautiful if you want to. And dividers are good, although you could just use some paper and make your own. That's absolutely fine. You will need a calculator. As we said, you'll need one for the exam, but also 10% of your course is math. So you'll need your own calculator. Also, you know, psychology really crosses over with other subjects. So English, for example, sits underneath psychology because there's so much essay writing. It's very much a written subject. So there's a lot of writing in lessons for homeworks and in the exam, it's, an, it's a written exam. So there's not any coursework there, 100% written exam. Maths, we've talked about, so data analysis, research methods, 10% of your course is maths. So that acceleration in your maths is really important as well. 
And of course, science, psychology is a science. So don't choose it if you think, oh, I've never liked science, I'll do psychology, because psychology is also a science. And as we saw earlier, the biopsychology element of it is very much technical, physical processes that we look at. You're probably wondering, well, what does a lesson look like, especially as Miss Kay and I are just basically sitting at home, you know, I'm sitting in my kitchen now talking you through some slides. So you're not really getting a feel of what the lessons look like. So I wanted to give you a little insight into our lesson structure. We have a real variety of lessons. So some are teacher led where we're really nailing those more technical concepts. Most of the time, student-led lessons are absolutely what's happening. You're discussing, you're analysing, you're doing written activities, you're applying your work, you're doing group work, you might be reading, doing assessments. So it's very much about students at the centre of learning. It's not going to look like us standing at the front telling you information. It's going to look like you engaging with it, actively questioning it, analysing it, evaluating it, doing written comparisons between things. So we do a lot of the time you can do your own notes and preparation at home for the content. And in the lessons, we're really engaging with well, what does that content mean? How do I use it in an exam question? How do I use it to understand how my friend just behaved? You know, how do I apply this to the real life situation? So the lessons are very much focused on skills, the skills of application, of evaluation, of analysis. And the content side, there's a huge expectation that in independent study, the flipped learning approach where you're looking at the content at home, you're digesting it, you're making your own notes from the textbooks, and you're practicing exam papers to apply it as well. In terms of assessment, there's weekly assessment in psychology. We have subject knowledge tests to see if you've nailed the specific content. And we have exam papers to see how well you can apply that knowledge and, and you know, achieve in the way that you want to. The psychology department has many expectations, but the first expectation is of ourselves as your teachers, and we are committed to developing you as courageous, intellectual, contemporary psychologists, psychologists who can go into the world of work or progress to university in continuing their role as a psychologist from your foundational studies at A level. But there's an expectation on you. And the expectation is that indeed you show respect. You show respect to staff, but you also show respect to your peers. And respect takes many facets, it takes many forms. Respect is shown in your conversations with us, even via email. And our very basic expectation is that when you're sending us an email, greet us, put good morning, miss. Respect also has to be displayed in how you communicate with your fellow colleagues, your peers. And also understanding that the psychology classroom is a safe space for us to express ourselves without shame or judgment. Organisation and time management is absolutely key. Psychology is a very content heavy subject and there may be times where you feel overwhelmed. And it's in those times that you must come and speak to myself and Miss Smith as we will give you the guidance, we will give you strategies on how to best get organised. You must also get all the resources that Ms. Smith spoke about earlier in the previous slides. Excellence. You will hear this word shared by myself many, many times. And the school slogan is excellence through endeavour. And in psychology, we take that same slogan and we say excellence is the norm. Excellence is the standard. We do not do mediocre. We put in our best efforts in our work. We try our hardest when it comes to exams and assessments. We try our hardest to remain engaged in lessons because we understand that you were created with excellence in mind and therefore you have no other choice but to be excellent. So I always say to my students, it's either you're excellent or you're not. It's either you're fully committed to the subject or you're not. It's either you're going to do the work or you won't. And I hope that all of you will choose to be excellent. Engagement is crucial. You must remain on task for every single lesson. There's no time to play. Two years is a very, very short amount of time. You'll look back and you will say to yourself, where did the time go? So we need your total focus. And finally, we need you to be a psychologist. The moment you step into our classrooms, you are a psychologist. You are beginning to understand the human mind and behavior. 
And what that looks like is that in practice, when you cover something in class, you must take it home. You must take it to your conversations with your friends. And then in that way, you are practicing. In that way, you are actually strengthening what you've covered in the classroom. A psychologist isn't just a psychologist in the classroom. A psychologist exudes their knowledge in every aspect of their life. And you will find how beautiful psychology is able to connect with so many spheres of your life. So these are our five expectations. Respect, organisation and time management, excellence, engagement, and you must be a psychologist. The next few slides will show you examples of students' work from this year, and they have been absolutely fabulous. Here we have some revision posters from our biopsychology unit, where we looked at the ways of studying the brain, we looked at the fight or flight response, and we also looked at neurons and synaptic transmission, just to name a few. And these students, even via remote learning, were able to remain engaged and display excellence in their work. Another example is that our students contributed to the school newsletter and they did so by making connections between psychology and the coronavirus pandemic. In doing so, they showed themselves to be true psychologists, psychologists who are contemporary, psychologists who are able to make connections between the real world and their textbook. And this is the same expectation that we have for our future psychologists coming into Hayes. Our students put in the work every single day and they do so by engaging in pre-reading tasks where they will read ahead of the lesson or the teacher will give them a few pages from the textbook to read and they produce summary notes, sometimes in the form of a table like you can see on the screen or sometimes in a form of just prose notes in their own um, notepad. And this is very, very important. It's a fantastic quality that we see and celebrate in our psychologists at Hayes. And we can see another example of what their pre-reading notes look like. When you do come into school, you'll be able to see real life examples and not just these ones on the screen. In psychology, we engage in weekly assessments and they are known as subject knowledge tests. They take the form of either being a quiz on showing my homework, a hard copy paper quiz taken in class. Sometimes we will use a website to conduct the quiz. Other times we might engage in a game of Kahoot. But the long and short of it is these weekly assessments are to reveal your knowledge and also shows us where you might have misconceptions and perhaps where we need to revisit certain topics. It's important that our students prepare for these assessments. And even if we haven't told them that there's an assessment, we expect you to be ready at all times. Now, we want you to engage in some of your own research and we're going to give you three research studies to look at. So very different research studies, a range of topics in psychology. The first one is by somebody called Ivan Pavlov, who investigated a concept called classical conditioning. And this is really where he learned about learning through association. So when you research this study, you'll find out about dogs salivating to the sound of a bell. So if that's the sort of information you're finding out, you're on the right lines with Pavlov there. The second study is about Milgram, who looked at obedience. So he's from social psychology and he was really interested in do we do what we're told and why? And do we do what we're told to the point where we're doing something that we think is really wrong? Um, so how far do we go to obey an authority figure? And what's really interesting about this is you might think that you wouldn't do something when you're asked beforehand, but in the actual situation itself, you might behave differently and that's what they found in quite an extreme way it's a really interesting study and the last one is a biopsychology study and this was looking at what do the different hemispheres within our brain do what do they control how do they work if one is not communicating with the other one so this is more of a technical study more of a biological study that gets you to look at how interesting our brains are now, what we'd love you to do is look at each of the three studies and I've put some website links that might help you to start with that. Research them, find out about them, learn about them, read about them, start to fall in love with the content of psychology and then write a summary for each one. 
Now, if you're quite a visual, you like a storyboard, split it into these six sections and do it as a storyboard, maybe with some pictures and an outline. If you would prefer it to write it as a written report, just do that with subheadings, absolutely your choice. But you're thinking about the six things on the screen there. So why did they do it? First of all, the aims. What's the point? What did they want to find out? Secondly, to the method, how did they do it? So that psychologist, what did they actually go out and do? The third bit, what did they find out? So what were the outcomes of their study? Then four and five are some evaluation. So a critical part of psychology is being able to say what was good and bad about a study? What was a really great thing about how they did it? And what was not such a good thing about how they did it that might impact on the findings? And the sixth thing is, if you were going to teach it to us, find something interesting that you'd use. So a video, an audio link, something that you come across in research that you think would really engage us when you teach us about that study. There's a few websites on the screen here to get you started, but of course you can do your own searches. You can use books if you prefer to as well, and you have some books around. Um, or you can share, you know, share website ideas with other people if you know that they're doing the induction as well. So feel free to explore and do your own research. The freedom of doing that in an independent way, really essential to success at A-level. So, you know, enjoy that element of the task. So let's have a go at talking through Sperry and Gazaniga's research on spit brain patients. The aim of their research was to examine the extent to which the two brain hemispheres are specialised for certain functions. It's worth noting that the left hemisphere of our brain is responsible for language processing, whereas the right hemisphere is responsible for creativity and visual spatial awareness. It's also worth noting that anything that is presented to us in our left visual field is processed by the right hemisphere of our brain and anything that's presented to us in our right visual field is processed in the left hemisphere of our brain. Our brain is contralateral, it works in opposite. Now interestingly enough, in split brain patients, what happens is that their corpus callosum, which is the thing that connects both hemispheres together, is cut. Whereas in a normal brain patient, they have a normal corpus callosum that is able to allow the two hemispheres to communicate. And I'll give you this example. Let's say you present the word cat to a normal brained individual. And what happens is that word cat goes into the right hemisphere. But we know that if the left hemisphere is responsible for language processing, the only way for this individual to be able to say the word cat is for the information that has now gone into their right hemisphere to get into their left hemisphere. And the way it gets into it, it's through their corpus callosum, which is in this region here. And they can successfully say the word cat. But in a spit brain patient, if you present the word cat to them, unfortunately, what happens is the information goes into their right hemisphere because cat is presented on the left hand side. However, in order for them to say the word cat, they need their language center and their language center is located in the left and not the right hand side of the brain. And because they don't have a corpus callosum, there is no way of getting that information to the left hand side because there's no corpus callosum in this region. Therefore, they are unable to say the word cat. And this is a long and short of Sperry and Gazaniga's research. In terms of their methods, so they had 11 patients with a history of severe epilepsy. They all had their corpus callosum severed or cut at varying times to alleviate their epilepsy. And epilepsy often causes seizures. Sperry and Gazaniga used three tasks to test for hemispheric lateralization. And that's just another fancy word for saying the role of each hemisphere in performing certain functions. And these tasks include describe what you see, feel and also drawing tasks. These tasks were either presented to the patient's right or left visual field. Their findings, well, when information is inputted to one hemisphere in a split brain patient, the information is not transferred to the other hemisphere as the corpus callosum is cut. And that was a key finding for them. In terms of evaluation, so one strength of their study is that they use very controlled and standardized tasks and all of the participants experience the same situation. And that we would say in psychology makes the study high in internal validity. 
However, a negative would be, well, it's got low population validity. They only use 11 patients and all of these patients suffered from epilepsy. So can we say that these 11 patients accurately re represent the wider population? The sample is far too small. And we'd also say that for that reason, it's low and generalizable. We can't generalize these findings to the everyday individual person who doesn't suffer from epilepsy. Also, the study is low in temporal validity. This study was conducted in 1967. That's a long time ago. And we might say that perhaps the, the way surgery is conducted in epileptic patients has changed since then. It might be that the task that we use to, you know, check and analyze split brain patients has advanced. So therefore, the findings of this study from 1967 may not be applicable in 2020. And in psychology, we say that the study is low in temporal validity. That word temporal literally means time, historical validity. And then finally, for the teach it. So there's a lovely link by Tutor to You where they explain Sperrier and Gazaniga's research on split brain patients. But in the following slide, I'm going to show you a very, very neat um, example of an individual who has half a brain and it's a BBC um, documentary. So here we have Jody who has half a brain and I encourage you to click on this link. I show it to all my students in biopsychology and have a read um, about her experience of only having half a brain. It's very interesting and it's very apt for the study of split brain research. So I hope that you've enjoyed it. And also we have gone through one study together. So it's now time for you to have a go at the other two studies by Milgram and Pavlov using the same um, headings that we use for Sperry and Gazaniga's research. So there we have it. We have finished the session. Well done for keeping up with us for a full hour. It's been brilliant and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Now the task is for you to write one paragraph on why you chose to study psychology, what you expect and how you plan to excel on the course. And I'm looking forward to reading your paragraph during our first lesson back. We want you to also complete the bridging unit ahead of our return to sixth form and bring your work from today to our first psychology lesson. And lastly, remember that excellence is the norm. We do not do mediocre in psychology. We want you to keep safe and well, and we hope you have a lovely summer and we will see you soon.